Hello everyone, welcome back, Professor Cameron here. Now, in our last video, what we went ahead and did is we covered G-code, um, the basics of it. So we covered uh, how we would use G-code if we were creating an engraving. Now, what we're going to cover today is how we would use G-code if we wanted to mill out a piece. And this is the piece we're going to be milling today, this sort of sideways tombstone shape. Now, the basics of it are pretty much the same. It's essentially the same G-code plotting points. However, one thing we have to take into consideration is tool diameter, or cutter offset. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to program in a tool change so that we can drill out this hole here. Now, this shape that I have here, this is a 4 by 4 and a half inch uh, block of material. This pad here, this is what would get clamped into the vise, and this um, tombstone chip, this is what we actually want to machine. This is the piece that we want. So what we would do is we would take this material, clamp it in, cut our profile, flip this over, and then face off this material here. Uh, in my model, this is a half inch thick, and our part is a quarter inch thick. These could be whatever proportions you want. This is just whatever I happen to model. So let's go ahead and uh, run through how we would do this. Now, what I've done is I've gone ahead and sketched up all of the points, all of the critical points that we need to uh, be aware of. Now, you can do this in... Um, AutoCAD, you can do this in SolidWorks, uh, you can do it on graph paper. I just did it in, in Microsoft Paint for illustration purposes. Now, like I said, last uh, video, we went ahead and we covered an engraving bit, which would look something kind of like this. Now, the benefit to this is that the point, the actual cutting bit, is in line with the center of the part. So all we have to do is plot points uh, to their true value, and it will cut exactly what we expect. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be cutting using a half-inch diameter uh, end mill. Now, the problem with that is our half-inch diameter end mill is offset. Or the cutting surface is offset from the center of the spindle. So what we have to do, since this is a half inch diameter end mill, we have to take into account this quarter inch offset when we're plotting our points for this. Because if we went ahead and just plotted true points, you can see the effect that would have. That would actually cut a quarter inch into our piece. All right. So what we have to do is we have to offset it so that it's cutting out what we expect it to. Now I've gone ahead and I've generated all the g-code for us um, for brevity's sake. And to cut this out and drill the holes it came out to about 52 lines of g-code. However there's only 13 lines of novel g-code. Everything else is pretty much just a, a copy and paste job. So let's go through this. Now, when we look at our model, I've programmed in, or I've modeled in, uh, the, the cutter. Now, when we go ahead and cut this, right, what we notice is we can't just cut this tombstone out. Because we're going to have a chunk of material over here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to run a profile. We're going to take our cutter and run it along the perimeter, like that. That's going to clear out a good chunk of this material on the side here. And then when we go ahead and cut out our profile, it's going to finish that cutting. So there's enough material in here. And our cutter is large enough where when we do a perimeter profile, and then we do our part profile, it's going to cut out all this in between here. Now, with the exception of this area in here. 
if we were to cut this part in real life, it would have just the tiniest bit of material left over in here. Now for brevity's sake, I'm not going to cover how to cut this material out. Uh, this would just be plotting a few new uh, contours in here. What I would actually do in real life is just take this over to a bandsaw and chop that off. Um, either method works, it depends on the, the application. So just know that in our programming, we would have a little bit of extra material over here. Like I said, I'm not worried about that uh, for the context of this video. So let's first go ahead and write the G code to cut this outer profile. Now, um, you guys will have to bear with me for this video. It's, it's not going to be the most exciting. It's just going to be talking about plotting points. Um, but hopefully by the end of this, you guys will have a good understanding of how to program parts using cutter offsets and tool changes. So let's go ahead and take a look at our image here. And the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to run a perimeter. So we're just going to hit the four corners of this. So we're going to start our code off like we always do. We are going to go um, a G00. So the machine is going to move as fast as it can to X0, Y0, Z.1. So the cutter is going to be sitting right here above our part by a hundred thousandths. Next thing it's going to do is a G01 command that is going to plunge into our part 50 thousandths deep. 50 thousandths is our maximum cut amount. So that's why we have to repeat this line of code several times to cut a quarter of an inch. For the plunge, I slow that feed rate down to 3 inches per minute. So now our cutter is sitting right here, 50 thousandths into our part. Our next command is going to be to take our cutter and cut it up to this point. So we're doing a G01 to X0, Y4 at a feed rate of 10. We upped our feed rate. So now our cutter is sitting here. Our next command is going to be to come over here in this line of code, x4.5, y.4, or y of 4. We're going to come down and then over, back to zero. And that's what these next two lines of code are. Now, once we've got that perimeter cleared out, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut Our profile. So we're going to take our cutter. Let's see here. Right now we're right here. What we're going to do is we're going to bring it right up to here to start cutting this profile. So we're going to adjust our diameter or our cutter values here over a quarter of an inch. So our X is actually going to be 0.5. So our cutter is going to be sitting right here. So we're going to go to X of 0.5, Y of 0.5. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our cutter and we're going to cut it up to here. So we're going to add a quarter of an inch to our Y value. So we're going to go to x of 0.5, y of 3.75. The hardest part in this whole thing is remembering which direction to add or subtract that cutter value to. Next, we're going to take our cutter and move it to this point right here. <coughs> so our x value is actually going to be right on the nose, 2.75. We're not going to have to add a value to this, or add a uh, offset to this. So we're going to go to G01, X of 2.75, Y of 3.75. Our Y doesn't change. Now here's where it's going to get tricky when we start our arc. Like last time, it's going to be a G02 command because we're cutting, counter or cutting clockwise. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify the endpoint first. 
So because we want our cutter to come all the way down to here, all right, all the way down to here, what we're going to do is go ahead and add on a quarter of an inch, or in this case, subtract a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go to x of 2.75, y of uh, 0.25. I like that. Now for our I and our J, as we remember, they are the center point of the arc relative to our start point. Now right here, I have our center points listed. However, this is to the actual side. This doesn't take into account the cutter offset. So our I, which is our X displacement is going to be zero. Our Y we have to add a quarter of an inch to. So this is going to be J of minus 1.75. So that's going to cut it down to here. Our next command, G01, that's going to take our cutter and move it out to here. And then we're going to bring it right back up a quarter of an inch to where we started. So let's go ahead and copy all of this. We're going to take this first half here and paste this into our G-code simulator. And we'll, we'll see what this looks like. And this looks pretty good. Now the thing you have to remember, this is plotting the toolpath not what our part is going to look like. So that's why it looks a little bit different. Uh, but what we have is we've got our perimeter being cut here. And then we're coming over, cutting up over our arc, and then back to our start point. Now this looks great. I'm happy with how this looks. So all we have to do right now is to take all of our code that we've already written and copy it. So you can see that's what I've done here. I've just taken everything and created a second pass, a third pass, a fourth pass, and a fifth pass. Uh, because we're only cutting 50 thousandths at a time, to cut to our full quarter inch depth, we've got to take five passes. So this is all the same code, just copied. And the only thing we're adjusting each time is our depth. So let's see what this looks like. That looks pretty good here. You can see it's creating that tombstone shape, that same cutter uh, profile. And it's just cutting it down 50 thousandths each time. Now, you may notice uh, between the code that I give you and the code that you see in this video, the outside perimeter profile is not being copied. I just forgot to add that for the purpose of this video. The code you have uh, will have this outside perimeter being cut down as well. So this looks good, right? What we have is we've got our profile being cut down uh, to our full quarter inch depth. So let's go ahead now and do a tool change and cut out that hole that we have in the center of our part. Now this hole, it has a diameter of half of an inch. So theoretically we, we could use our half inch end mill. Uh, it's generally not a good practice to drill with end mills, we want to use a, a drill for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a tool change and then how we would drill this. So in our code here, we have a bit for drilling. Now we ended this, we ended right here. So what we're going to do is our first command is going to be to bring our tool to zero, zero, 
x and y, and then a z of 1. So what we're doing is we're lifting it off the part. The command for a tool change is M06, M06. That tells the machine we want to do a tool change. And then what we're going to do is we're going to specify T2. T is the tool number. Um, T is for tool, and then T is going to change. So if you want tool 2, tool 3, tool 4, so on and so forth. Now, the machine doesn't know what tool 2 is. Um, it's just going to prompt you to change that tool out. So you have to know what tool 2 is going to be. In our case, we know it's going to be a half inch diameter end mill. So we've swapped that out. What we're going to do is we're going to do a G00 command and move to this center point location, which is going to be X of 2.75, Y of 2. So we're going to take this tool and we're going to bring it right here. Assume this is our drill bit now. Our next command, since our feed rate is still at 3, that's a, a good Z feed rate uh, for drilling. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have it go down a hundred thousands. So we're going to do G01 Z of a hundred thousands. You can push the Z a little bit more aggressively with a drill bit than you can with an end mill. Uh, so that's why we're doing a hundred thousand at a time instead of fifty thousands. Now you'll notice what I do here is I take that Z and I bring it right back up. What we're programming in here is what we call pecking. So in drilling, you really don't want to drill it all the way straight down. You want to drill it down a little bit, lift it up. And what lifting it up does is it helps clear the chips out. So that's why we have this Z retractor. We're going to bring it right back down again. So we're bringing it down to 200 thousandths of an inch. Um, and then we're going to bring it right back up again to clear those chips, and then we're going to bring it down to 0.3. Our part depth is a quarter inch. However, if you guys remember, when you look at a drill bit, they've got that point on it. When you zero... You're going to zero that drill bit on the tip here. So what you want to do when you drill with drill bits is you want to drill a little bit deeper so that you don't have this uh, cone-shaped hole in your part. So that's why we're going just a little bit deeper so we have a nice clean through hole. Now once we've got our full depth here, what we're doing is we're going to retract this tool all the way out of our part. We're going to bring it up to an inch above our part we are going to go back home. We're going to bring our tool back to zero, 00, and then M30 is going to end our program for us. So let's copy all this now uh, and see how this looks. And that looks pretty good. So we've got our original profile. And then right here, we're taking, this is where we're doing our tool change. All right. So we're bringing our tool out here, swapping it out for our drill bit, bringing it over. And then what you can't see in here is the actual pecking because it's all on a straight line. But this is where we're drilling that hole. And then, like I said, once we finish this, what we would do is we would take this piece here, let's see where to go. We would take this piece here, and then if we wanted to separate this, we would flip it over and then machine off this backside. So, if you guys have any questions on this, whether how to deal with a tool change or how to accommodate a tool diameter offset, uh, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you know, you guys can always email me, uh, leave a comment, whatever you guys want to do. Um, and as always, I hope you guys have a great day.